Hi, this is Julie Harland, and I'm your math gal. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where you could search for any of my videos organized by topic. This is part nine of equation of circles, and we're going to do the following three problems. So the directions are to find, for each circle described, write the standard and general equation for that circle. So here's the first one. We have a center at 3, 0 and a radius of 3 square roots of 3. So remember this is h, this is k, and this is r, our radius. So we put that in the standard form, which will be x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. And of course you could skip writing the minus zero if you realize that's just going to be y squared, equals three square roots of two squared. So if I want to write it in standard form, we would rewrite the y minus zero as y squared, and we could square three square roots of two. So remember what that means. It means three squared and square roots of two squared. So 3 squared and square roots of 2 squared is the same thing as 9, right? 3 squared is 9, and square roots of 2 squared is just 2. So this is going to be 18 once you s simplify it. So you could just sort of copy the left-hand side. And this is our standard form for that circle. So here's the standard form. All right, now it also asks for the general form. This means just multiply everything out and set the equation equal to zero. So we're going to have x minus 3 squared. So remember that's x minus 3 times x minus 3 plus y squared, and we're going to subtract 18 from both sides. So this will give you x squared minus 6x. See, if you want to see all those steps, it's really minus 3x minus 3x. That's where that comes from. Plus 9 plus y squared minus 18. And then we just combine like terms. And at the same time, when we write it in the general form, we start with the x squared term. And then we have the y squared term. Then we put the x terms together, that's the minus 6x, then any y terms, there are none, and then our constant, 9 minus 18 is minus 9 equals 0, and this is our general form. By the way, when you do the general form, we usually also want to have all integers, in other words, no fractions. Here's our second problem. We have a center at negative one four and a radius of two thirds. Again, that's our h, that's our k, and that's our radius. So we put it in the formula. Now remember, if we're going to do x minus h, it'll be x plus one because it'd be minus a negative one squared plus y minus four squared equals two thirds squared equals the radius squared. So the only thing I would do to finish this off in standard form is to square two-thirds and write four-ninths. And here we have the uh, for the standard form. I'm not sure if I said that right a minute ago, but I meant the standard form. Okay, now we want to put that in general form. Well, we could square all of this to begin. So let's start with that. So I'm not going to show all the steps this time. This time we're going to do x plus 1 quantity squared. So remember, if you use the formula for squaring a binomial, that gives you x squared plus 2x plus 1. And when we square this one, we've got y squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 4 ninths. Now notice I've got a fraction. 
When you write it in general form, what we usually do is eliminate all fractions by multiplying both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. And in that case, this is going to be 9. Now it's up to you if you want to combine like terms over here on the left first, the 1 plus 16. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to just leave it as is, and I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 9. So remember, I'm multiplying every single term by 9. So I have 9 times x squared is going to give me the 9x squared. 9 times 2x will give me 18x. 9 times 1 will give me 9. 9 times y squared will give me 9y squared. 9 times negative 8x will give me negative 72x. 9 times 16 will give me 144. And there's the equal sign. 9 times 4 ninths, this is the reason we multiply by 9, we wanted the 9's to cancel, we'll just give you 4. So our last step is to rewrite this so we've got the x squared term first and the y squared term next, etc. But we also need to add the constants on the left and subtract 4. So check this out. I noticed that if I just subtract 4 first, this will give me 140. That's a little bit easier. So I'm going to have 140. I'm going to add that to the 9, just so you see where that's coming from. You could do it in different steps. So I've got 9x squared plus 9y squared. Then we're going to look for the x term. That's 18x. Then we're going to look for the Oops, this was a mistake right here. That should have said y. You probably caught that already. So we've got 18x, we have minus 72y. Right, and then what am I going to have for my constants? I'm going to have 140 plus 9, plus 149 equals 0. And so this is the general form. Notice in the general form of a circle, the coefficients for x and y will be the same. Right? So as long as they're the same, it's a circle. So if you've got an x squared term plus a y squared term and these are the same, they're both 9, the coefficients, then it will be a circle. If they're different or if there's a minus sign here, it's not going to be a circle, it'll be something else. All right, here's our last one. We want a circle with a center at negative 2, 5 and passing through the origin. So that means it goes through the origin, and that means the origin is a point on the circle. So we're given our h and our k, right? This is our h, this is our k, but we don't have the radius. But think about it, if here's negative 2, 5, wherever that is in space, right? Negative 2 down 5, and the origin might be somewhere over here at 0, 0 then the radius is the distance from the center to, you know, any point on the circle. Remember, that's the definition. So we need to find the distance between 0, 0 and negative 2, 5 to get the radius. All right, so we're going to use the distance formula using 0, 0 and negative 2, 5, and that's going to be the radius, right, the radius. So we've got the difference of the x values, so I could put, let's see, I like to set it up, and I fill in the blanks. So for the x values, I've got a 0 and a negative 2, 0, and I'm going to plug in a negative 2. And for the y values, I've got a 0 and a 5. Now remember, you could either put 0 minus 5 or 5 minus 0, because once you square it, you'll get the same number. So I'm going to write 5 minus 0. I do this on purpose to show you it doesn't matter which way you do it. If you did 0 minus 5, you'll get negative 5, but when you square it, you're going to get 25, which was, is exactly what I'm going to get as well. So what's 0 minus negative 2? That's 2 squared. And what's 5 minus 0? That's 5 squared. So I've got the square root of 4 plus 25, or square root of 29. Now, if r is square root of 29, what's r squared? 
In other words, if r equals square root of 29, because in the formula we always write down what r squared is, right? So r squared is going to be 29. So I could go directly to the formula here. Well, here's my h and my k, remember. Here's the center again, negative 2, 5. So we have the formula for a circle, x minus h, so that'll be plus 2 squared. And then we have y minus 5 equals r squared. So if you want, you could have written square root of 29 squared, but I already figured out r squared is just the number 29. And so this is the general form. I'm sorry, standard form. To get the general form, we just multiply that all out. So let's do that now. We've got a square x plus 2. That'll be x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus y squared minus 10y plus 25 equals 29. So I'm going to put uh, my x term first, my y squared next. Then I'm going to put my, I'm sorry, if I said that wrong, put my x squared term first, put my y squared term next, put my x term, which is the plus 4x, put my y term, which is the negative 10y, and notice I've got 4 plus 25, that's plus 29, and then I'm going to have to subtract 29 from both sides, and I'll do that on the next step. What happens when you subtract 29 from both sides? You get x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 10y equals 0, and there is our general form. Now, writing it in standard form is really the most useful form for graphing. It's easy to pick out the center and the radius, but often you will see equations in general form, and it's good to recognize that a circle in gen general form looks like this, where you have it, the x squared plus the y squared term have the same coefficient. That's why we're writing it like this, because later, you might see a whole bunch of uh, polynomial equations, and you want to be able to tell by looking at it, is it a circle, is it a line, is it an ellipse, it is, a hyper is it a hyperbola, etc. So the general form is, is basically so you could recognize it, so you could put it in the kind of form that's going to help you graph it. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where you can view all of my videos which are organized by topic.